The art of soap making has been around for thousands of years, but at its heart is chemistry. I'm going to take you through that chemistry saponification process today with natural soap making. So with natural soap making, there's some basic ingredients and a basic equation that we are doing to create that soap. So we are starting with an acid, which is actually our, our oils and our fats, and our base, which is the lye. This is a cold process type of soap making, which is different than your like melt and pour um, hot process, which would be like glycerin that you can pour into a mold that you buy pre-made. The ingredients can be found uh, pretty locally, grocery stores, hardware stores, or you can order online and we're gonna walk you through my recipe. This is a recipe I've been doing for about 25 years and I've always had it to be a success and it makes a lot of soap, which lasts you a long time. So the ingredients that you're going to need is some type of fats or oils. Um, my recipe includes olive oil and vegetable shortening or you can use lard and coconut oil. So the recipe for that we can include down in the description below, but it's going to be 24 ounces uh, by weight of olive oil and 24 ounces of coconut oil by weight and 38 ounces of your vegetable shortening or lard. So the water is uh, distilled water or spring water, as pure water as you can get, and that's gonna be 32 ounces by weight of water and then we're gonna do 12 ounces of lye. Lye is 100% sodium hydroxide. You can buy that online, like from a soap making chemical company, and it'll say sodium hydroxide on it. Or if you don't do that, you can sometimes find it in local hardware stores in the drain cleaning section. Just make sure to read the label that it is 100% lye, there's no other additives. So this is 100% sodium hydroxide, it's a powder, and that's going to be the thing that um, brings our fats and our, this is our base together to make that soap. It's gonna be very slippery and sudsy. Um, other things that you're going to need, a good scale for weighing out all those ingredients, and a candy thermometer, and some measuring cups. Plastic is good, glass is good, Stainless steel is good, silicone is good for any of your um, supplies, but things like aluminum or tin or some of those lighter, uh, cheaper metals, not gonna be the best working with the lye. So I have already pre-measured out our coconut oil and our shortening in my stainless steel pot. I'm gonna take that to the stove and just bring it to just melt it. You don't need to get it super hot. Um, and we're gonna be able to cool it down after it's melted by adding the olive oil into it. What we're going to do is we're gonna get our fats all mixed together and then we're gonna to mix together our lye. And we're gonna do that outside because it does create an exothermic reaction, which means it's going to get hot and it does put off some not so nice fumes. So in a well-ventilated area or outside and we're gonna mix that together and then we're going to wait until our oils and our lye mixture is about the same temperature. Ideally, you'd want it between 95 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit, but as long as they're the same temperature somewhere in there, that's what we're looking for. Then we're going to add our lye mixture to the oils and that's going to start that chemical reaction, that saponification process to make our soap. It's going to be a liquid for now, and that's gonna give us time to add in all of our fun stuff, like our scents, our botanicals, our powders to make different colors and make it your own customized flavor or scent of soap. But after a little while, after a day or so, it's going to get hard. And this soap with the cold process needs to cure. That chemical equation needs to balance out. So the, the lye base mixture needs to mix with the acid fat mixture and come to a meeting point in the middle where it's balanced. And so if there has ever been any thoughts about lye soap is bad for you or maybe harsh on your skin, it's probably because the soap did not come to completion and didn't get a chance to cure. So I always tell people when I make this recipe to let it cure for about a month from when we make it today. One month from now, it'll be completely cured and actually really good for you, um, for your skin, especially if you have any skin issues because you can control the ingredients that go into it and they're all natural, so we're gonna get going on mixing the soap process.
All right, we're gonna mix up our lye solution, and I like to do this outside to, be, uh, to prevent any fumes uh, that are gonna come off that. But we're starting at about uh, 50 degrees for our water temperature, and I'm gonna add in the lye, which is just a, a crystalline powder. And I've already pre-measured that out, pre-weighed it. I'm gonna give it a stir. It's gonna get hot very quickly. And then we're just gonna let that sit and come to temperature. We're gonna hope that uh, we're gonna get our oils and our lye mixture about the same temperature, somewhere around 100 degrees before we mix it together to start making soap. So we are at now 180 degrees. So we're gonna let that sit. I have our melted vegetable shortening and coconut oil in the pan and I'm just adding in the pre-weighed olive oil and this will make our, our oils cool down a little bit faster. What we're looking for is a temperature of about somewhere between 95 and 110 and we're hopefully going to get that those oils cooled down enough to match up with the lye, which I've also brought in. So I'm gonna check the temperature on the lye and in the oils, and if they are the same, we can get ready to mix them together. This process, when we add the lye into the oils, is really the hardest part to explain, so I'm glad that we have it on video. What we're looking for is the soap coming to trace, and there's going to be subtle changes. Once we add the lye, it's going to start to look kind of like melted butter, and then it'll move kind of into a lemon curd stage, and when the soap is ready to be worked with as far as adding in our oils or in our any of the herbs or additions that you wanted to put into your soap to finish it, it's gonna kind of look like vanilla pudding would be the best way to describe it. So those changes are gonna happen slowly, but we're gonna show you in a sped up version kind of how that ch change happens. So you can do this mixing process of the lye and oils by hand, but if you had an immersion blender or a hand mixer, that's going to speed up the process a lot. It should maybe take about 10, 15 minutes for the soap to come together. All right, we are at soap, or at least enough that we can start the fun part, which is playing with all of the additions and scents and colorants. So what I was looking for with the blender and letting it come together was coming to kind of like vanilla pudding consistency and color. Also what I'm looking for is a nice steady stream coming off of the beaters or off of my spatula here. And that's telling me that it's enough of the chemistry has happened, enough of the very caustic base of the lye mixture and the fats have come together to thicken it up, to hold the scents or any additions that you wanna to add to your soap. Um, but again, it's, it's gonna take some time to cure. So you do need to let it sit. I usually recommend, like I said, a month before you actually use it because this process is going to continue. It's very liquidy right now. And then when you can unmold it, it will be very solid. You can unmold it after a couple days or leave it in the mold until you're ready to use it after that one month mark. So what I'm going to do is I have some silicone molds here, other molds that work really nice, especially if you make one batch and you wanna make a lot of different kinds of soap or scents of soap, is just some milk cartons. So I went down to our local elementary and had the kids save me their milk cartons. They're waxed, so it's very easy to get the soap out of it when you're all done and it's a nice, perfectly soap bar sized package. Um, you can also use wooden molds you would line them with like a wax paper to make sure you can get the soap out as well. Molds for like a large loaf of soap, that's generally if you're making all one scent, but make sure you do line it with wax paper so you can get your bars out to cut them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour our base. This is unscented. It's kind of that light yellow vanilla pudding color right now. When it dries or cures, it's gonna be mostly white, creamy white. I'm gonna put a base down in my mold here. I'm gonna make three different kinds of soap in this mold. And then I'm gonna show you how to add in like a swirl of color on top. I'm also gonna add in my scents into that swirl of color. So you can use soap oils, fragrance oils. You can use essential oils. You can use um, different types of alcohol-based perfumes. I have essential oils here today. You can use whatever you like. You don't have to use any smells at all. And I'm gonna make a couple different combinations. I also have some additions, some botanicals and they add both texture, some uh, therapeutic qualities, if you will, and some color. 
So I have cinnamon, I have cocoa powder, I have oatmeal, I have some rose petals, some lavender flowers, some corn flower petals that add some nice pretty blue color. I have some dandelions that I dried, and I also have a tea bag with orange spice uh, tea that I'm going to make into an orange spice soap. So I'm going to pour in and I'll show you how to add in the swirl of color. So now it is the fun part. We are going to add in our scents and any additions like colors or botanicals to make our soap really pretty as well as smell really nice. So I'm going to, I separated out a little bit of extra soap. That'll be at the top for the bars that I poured into the silicone mode mold. I'm going to add some oil. This is orange. And you can get your oils or your scents wherever you prefer. I'm not brand loyal. Um, so I'm gonna add in some orange and I'm gonna add in some cedar. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of, this is cosmetic grade um, colorant. And you can get that in like a craft supply store in the soap making aisle. You can order it online. And that's gonna add a nice kind of reddish cedar wood color to our soap. And then to get a nice color swirl, you just kind of um, plop a little bit on top and maybe do one swipe with your spoon um, or a, a stirring stick. You don't want to stir it too much because then you'll lose some of that color contrast. But I might add a little bit more color and then put in our molds. All right. So now onto each of these bars on the side, four bars, we're going to pour in a little bit of our scented and colored part of the soap. So have fun customizing your soaps however you prefer. And this is a soap I made last weekend, and so it's been sitting in the milk carton for uh, a week. And I'm gonna tear it open and cut it and show you that slice. This is a mint soap that I made for my husband. And it is hardened up so I can unmold it. And then um, I could get two bars out of this, this size, or you can leave it as a nice big chunk, it's up to you. So I'm gonna tear that off. It's still just a little bit soft, which will make it nice for cutting, but it's firm enough that it's gonna hold its shape, but it does still have to cure. So. I